Hi, welcome. It's Kenny Russell, Bulldoze of Faith, Living Life in the Spirit. We're on the Unlock and Evangelism Tour here in the USA. We're in Abilene, Texas. It's 4th of July, and I'm with Gary and Caroline. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Yeah. It's uh, great to have you here. Um, we're going to share a little bit about testimony and just... Uh, uh, because of the breeze that we're experiencing here, we're just using this mic here, so we're just going to pass the mic around. But uh, Gary, starting with you, we're just going to talk testimony. Just share a little bit of your story with us. Well, I, th I think the story first starts of our marriage restoration. Um, we, uh, for about 10 years, were living under the same roof, but we really were roommates um, up until about 2010, for, from about 2000 to 2010. And um, I had had a, had a, a great conversion or wake, awaken, awakening experience back in uh, 2008, 2009. And, um, and through that process, um, I was restored to the Father. Prior to that, you know, my wife, it would be been easier to, to ask the lady down the corner store, you know, to get something for me, you know. I mean, I couldn't even get a glass of water, you know, if I asked for it probably because there just wasn't any relationship. But um, the father had a different plan. So um, he started restoring our marriage and showed me he was going to restore our marriage. And so um, through several months um, of me um, getting closer in relationship with him, um, he started to... Uh, to work with Carolyn, and she started to see the difference in me and naturally started submitting to me, uh, and we really didn't have that in our relationship prior to that. And Carolyn, what was causing the division between the two? What started that division um, in your lives? I'm not really sure exactly where it started, um, but I felt like I was trying to be the leader of the home. Um, I wasn't sure that Gary wanted to step up to it and my father was the strong one in our house and so I guess since he didn't step up I was trying to and failed miserably at it um, and I, he would always say why don't you submit to me and I would say I will every every time you're right and do things under God's you know law um, I'll submit to you and I just felt like he never did I felt like I was um, raising our family I felt like I had to be the one stepping up because I didn't feel like I had a very strong Christian husband that was doing that like my father did for me so you were walking in faith with Yeshua you're walking in his ways and you just saw so much division in your house that you just felt things weren't going right but why why did you hold on what did, was there a word that you had what, what was the reason for holding on for 10 years living like that bringing up your children Sometimes I look back and, and I'm not ex exactly sure if there's one certain thing. Um, I just knew that divorce wasn't right. I knew that the father didn't want that for me. And um, I didn't believe in it. Um, I didn't think he wanted me to be miserable. But I, I just kept praying that the father would change my eyes, that I could see my husband through his eyes. And I mean, I, I fervently prayed that for about seven years. I really felt like I really meant it. And the last three, I was just like, okay, God, you know my heart, blah, blah, blah. And I really didn't mean it. I um, even talked to one of my nursing buddies at work and I said, you know, I don't feel like I'm praying with meaning anymore. I feel like it's just lip service. And she said, you know what? Fake it till you make it. Just keep praying the prayer. And I did. And um, I also saw a movie, um, the dare movie with uh, Kirk Cameron and they have a book and I, I bought the book and I did the 40 days on my husband and they I mean they have a book that you write in you know every day you you write it yeah fireproof you write in it and um, there's a prayer you say or you can say your own prayer and I every day when I wrote like my feelings it was like you know how did your day go and it was like well I did everything in the book and my husband didn't have anything good to say or you know it was always it was always negative and I'm sure it wasn't all him I, mean, I know it was part, part partly me um, but after 40 days I was just like okay well that was kind of a bust that that didn't really work and I just, just kept I just kept hanging on um, but when I saw that he had changed um, that he had truly changed you know, then I began to go, well, what is this, you know, because he had never been like that before. I saw him reading the Bible every day, and Gary's never been a reader. 
and I saw him reading, sitting in this chair, and I was thinking, what's on the other side of that book? Because I know, I know that is not the Bible, and I'd be like, yeah, faker. But obviously he did read it, and he, he finished the whole book in about six months, and um, and thank Yahweh that he did. You know, he restored my husband to the father, restored our marriage, restored our children. Um, I felt like for a long time that our kids probably couldn't get married because they didn't want to be like their parents, you know, and, and I feel responsible for that. But thank Abba, you know, he changed, he changed all of that. Amen. Amen. And Gary, through the process, obviously your wife is waiting, saying, Father, I need change within my marriage. She's holding on. She's seeing you starting to come alive with the scripture and almost a place, can't believe what is happening. What was going on in your heart? You know, were you reading the, the Bible from page one or did you like start in uh, John's gospel or what was going through uh, your heart and what, uh, what steps did you take really to coming into a real relationship with Yehovah? Well, it actually started with, uh, back in 2008, I was really worldly. Um, you know, I knew we were on the path of divorce. We both talked about it. You know, I had talked to an attorney and found out later she'd actually hired one. <laughs> so we were pretty close, and I was just going out in the world and, you know, um, drinking and different things like that. And came home in August of 2008 about, um, about 1 in the morning after you know, going to a, a restaurant, kind of sobering up a little bit and, and uh, fell asleep on the couch and woke up early in the morning on a, a Sunday morning and uh, really had, it, had this dream. I never really could say I heard from the Father, but in this dream I woke up and knew it was Him. I mean, I was wake, woke up in a sweat. And it's like my family was um, up in heaven and, or, and I was left behind. At that time I was a big pre tree rapture believer which I'm not anymore. The Father has shown me that's a false doctrine, but the, um, that had really scared me. And I woke up the next morning and I had a, I was right in front of my big screen TV and I, it was Sunday morning, turned on all my television stations. I had, you know, satellite and uh, I got kind of nervous when I couldn't find any Christian programming when I was flipping through the channels and my wife works on, had worked on Sunday. So I, there's no one in the house but me. My youngest daughter was just gone to college and so, um, but then again, a week later, I uh, went back into the same scene on the weekend, went back and, you know, I was, I was, I'd been really lonely and was, you know, just kind of searching and, um, came home from the bar, same scene, had another dream. And I was, uh, just in that dream, I was just walking around as the last man on earth. And as I was walking around in this desolate town of Abilene, it was just dark and everything was closed. And I thought, um, you know, there's nobody here. I walked forever. And then I saw this little light on in, a, in what I recognized as a church building. And so I went in, the, went in there and I was so relieved to find people. And when I went in there, I saw people gathered from different uh, races and different uh, backgrounds, different ages. and. And I was, uh, I just went up to him and I said, oh, good. I said, I'm, uh, you guys must be Christians. And they said, well, it's a Christian. And then I woke up. And I really didn't get the revelation of that dream until uh, much later, a couple of years later. You know, here I am keeping Sabbath. Here we are. The light, the church as I knew it as then as a building, I'm gathering, you know, in, in a, in a uh, group of people that from different races, different ages, and they, the light of Yeshua is, is Yeshua. And we're not really, um, you know, we're not sitting there um, with one man leading us. It's Yeshua as our head. And, and that's where I am today, you know, gathering with, uh, and supernaturally bringing people together uh, in congregations, you know, where we meet either in homes or, or in keeping Sabbath and so forth. Wow, that's incredible. So in the process, Caroline, you're seeing this change you get to the place where you realize, wait a second, maybe this is real. What were the key factors that you felt just sealed things for you in your relationship and how you're walking today? Well, I think the first thing that um, that sealed it for me was Gary had asked me, um, so let's let's get your Bible and let's see about the the flood and how many animals came on the 
on the ark and I was like I don't have to get my Bible I know this story I've been taught since you know a young child two of every and he's like go get your Bible and let's check it again and I read it and it said seven pairs and I went what so when that was questioned and I mean that's something that you're brought up with from a very young child if that was wrong what else did I have that was wrong and so in going to the Shabbat meetings with Gary, you know, I just finally, you know, was won over by all the things that, the, the lies that I had inherited and found out the truth. And, you know, the truth is in the Bible. You can't count on your husband or your, or your pastor or your friends to tell you. If it's not in the Word, it's, it's, it's no good. You know, it can't conflict with doctrine. But what, what sealed the deal with our relationship was he, um, he had asked me several times, well, can you watch a movie with me? And I'd be like, Ugh. I don't want to watch a movie with you. Okay, fine, watch a movie. And that went on for a couple of weeks, and, you know, he would sit at one end of the couch, and I would sit at the other, and then a couple of weeks after that, he'd say, well, can you sit next to me? And I'd be like, fine, I'll sit next to you. Now, I mean, there's no love. It's just like I really don't even like this guy yet because we hadn't been restored. And uh, one night he says, well, can I put my arm around you? And I'm like, well, fine, but just don't try anything. You know, here I am married, and I'm telling my husband, don't try anything. And... Um, one night we went to bed and he said, um, the father wants me to put my hand on your back or I can't remember how, how he did. And um, I just remember him, his hand being on me for 45 minutes or so. And I woke up the next day, no big deal. And I'm thinking as the day goes by, something's different. You know, what is it? And I said something to Gary about, wow, something's different today. And he said, you haven't really said anything mean to me today. And I was like, wow. That, that's awesome. That, that's pretty awesome. And then I was just like, and then he was just standing in front of me looking at me, and I just started crying, and I said, God softened my heart in the middle of the night. Just through you touching me, he instantly softened my heart so that I could see, finally, after the years I'd been praying, I could finally see him through the Father's eyes and not mine that were so skewed. It was amazing. Wow, what an incredible testimony of hope you know for determination and you know i think it is important especially for those that are coming into hebrew roots i meet many people who one partner of the marriage is in hebrew roots the others not there's division there's separation that's trying to bring things in you know in your situation slightly different you're coming into the hebraic roots together you're following shabbat together kind of at the same time you're flowing together but the bottom line was, you know, there was a separation in your marriage because of spiritual agreement. That's what was taking place. And what I'd like to say to those that are watching, you know, it's very important that we have spiritual agreement in our home because that is what's going to secure the work of the Spirit within our lives. And uh, that's really your, your testimony is you were separated, you were divided and here the Father has brought you to a place where you are truly one together. Um, what would you say, Gary, to people uh, who are watching, especially to men? Because I think, you know, when it comes down to the emotion, the way a man thinks, it's, it seems to be a lot easier for a man just to walk away from responsibility. Um, what would you share to uh, men that are watching, that are going through conflict in relationship? What would you share with them? Well, I would just seek the Father first, and and you know if you know and for restoration, you know, and, and you've got to be restored to Him before you can restore your marriage. That the, you know you've got to be submitted to the Father. That's when it naturally comes in line with the family. You know, in our situation, you know, we couldn't even agree when when I when I started going to church before. You know, when I when He had changed changed my heart, and she didn't even recognize it at first, and 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 thought, you know, this guy's probably still the same. He's not even really reading the Bible. Well, it was, um, here we go, you know, I'm going to church, you know, and I'm going by myself, you know. And um, people said, you know, you've really got to, uh, what's the deal with your wife? She said, you were married, I had the wedding ring, and they said, you really need to, 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 to find out what's, what the deal is with your wife because uh, it's going to affect your ministry. So um, I came in and talked to her and said, we've got to do something uh, because we're just living under one roof and, and we're not, you know, we're just roommates. And... Um, so in the process, you know, we just I decided, you know, let, let's let's get some marriage counseling. Maybe we can get some marriage counseling. That was the first step. Um, but we couldn't even agree on the same the right pastor. You know, we were still arguing about, you know, which pastor to use uh, the church she was going to, or the church I was going to, a different church at the time. 
And in the end, what, what happened was there was no man that restored our marriage. It was the father that totally restored it. And, you know, um, and it was a process. He showed me he was going to restore. Him. So, I, you know, I had faith in that. And, it, you know, within, you know, about a year, it was just totally restored in a process of things slowly and surely. And one of the things that he was showing me was that now I want you to share that testimony. We had shared that testimony once, um, probably the very first time I was at, at a gathering. And uh, after I got through, uh, Carolyn wasn't with me on that um, at the time and I shared it and the, a lady came up who had been through divorce and so and in the and so she had actually said Gary I, I like your story but I'd really like to hear Carolyn's side of it sometime so during uh, Sukkot uh, following Sukkot uh, the father pressed on me to share that testimony to a, quite a large group and uh, I just I couldn't believe all how many how, mu- how much it ministered to so many people that had been hurt um, and their marriages were not restored or they'd gone through a divorce and so forth so you know I can I can encourage other people that you know the father can restore your marriage because if if he can restore ours he can restore anyone's if you just if you seek him hey Amen. I like what you said there you know you said this process took a year and what's important in uh, their testimony is the fruit. It's about bearing fruit. It's not just about saying, this is how I am, this is what I do. But it's bearing fruit, and it's, it's the fruit being proven through time as, as, as we come together. And, you know, that's what gives security within the relationship to know it's real. But for the Father to do that work in you, you know, it's amazing. We always want to look to man first, don't we, when we're going through situations. But if we trust in Yehovah with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him, he will make our path straight. And I know for some watching right now, you need to make uh, a decision to bring change on how you're approaching your relationship that, uh, um problems uh, and struggles that you're going through you've got to change and, and the encouragement is are you allowing the father full reign to work are you prepared for the the longevity of the process of restoration because that's what true restoration is all about carolyn i would like to ask you just to pray uh, for those that are watching that are struggling in relationships that you know, have been doing things wrong, going the wrong way. I really believe that people that are watching right now are going to watch this and be impacted. And we want to stand with them in prayer for restoration. Just want to ask you just to pray for them. Sure. Thank you. Dear Father, I just come to you today with a heavy heart for America. I know there are many families out there suffering, and it's not just the husbands and wives, but children and families and their parents and just everyone around them, even friends, can feel the confusion and the suffering they're going through. And I just ask that you just press into them and just quicken to their spirit and speak to them in a way that they know that it's you. Just let them know that you are going to be there for them. Help them to seek you with all their mind and heart and all their soul. And if it takes marriage counseling to to talk to somebody, but to first seek you and to just press into you and um, for let let them be still. That's, I think that's a hard thing for Americans to do today is to find the time to be still and to listen. And I just would just ask that you would um, give people a sense of wanting to be still and wanting to listen and taking the time that it takes. Uh, it's not easy. It's a hard road. We know it is. Um, that's why there's so many divorces because people just walk away. And I would just ask that you would um, let them be surrounded with friends and family who would continue to support their marriage uh, because we know that all things work together for good to those that love you. And um, Father, I just pray that marriages will be restored and that the devil won't have his way. Um, We don't like to give him credit, but he's doing a pretty good job of destroying marriages. And Father, we just want to ask you to stop that right now and just take over America and save our married people's lives um, and just restore them to you first and then back to each other so that their families can live in harmony. Um, Father, we thank you so much for everything you give us. And we just ask this in your son's precious name. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. It's a blessing just to have you on uh, to share your testimony. I know it's going to minister to so many people that are watching. And anyway, I want to thank you for watching. Uh, tune in at bulldozerfaith.com to other broadcasts and look forward to seeing you on another broadcast. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.